Good afternoon. <clears throat> My colleagues and I remain squarely focused on our dual mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices for the American people. We understand the hardship that high inflation is causing, and we remain strongly committed to bringing inflation back down to our 2 percent goal. Price stability is the responsibility of the Federal Reserve. Without price stability, the economy doesn't work for anyone. In particular, without price stability, we will not achieve a sustained period of strong labor market conditions that benefit all. Since early last year, the FOMC has significantly tightened the stance of monetary policy. Today, we took another step by raising our policy interest rate a quarter percentage point and we are continuing to reduce our securities holdings at a brisk pace. We've covered a lot of ground, and the full effects of our tightening have yet to be felt. Looking ahead, we will continue to take a data-dependent approach in determining the extent of additional policy firming that may be appropriate. I'll have more to say about monetary policy after briefly reviewing economic developments. Recent indicators suggest that economic activity has been expanding at a moderate pace. Growth in consumer spending appears to have slowed from earlier in the year. Although activity in the housing sector has picked up somewhat, it remains well below levels of a year ago, largely reflecting higher mortgage rates. And higher interest rates and slower output growth also appear to be weighing on business fixed investment. The labor market remains very tight. Over the past three months, job gains averaged 244,000 jobs per month, uh, a pace below that seen earlier in the year, but still a strong pace. The unemployment rate remains low at 3.6 percent. There are some continuing signs that supply and demand in the labor market are coming into better balance. The labor force participation rate has moved up since last year, particularly for individuals aged 25 to 54 years. Nominal wage growth has shown, shown some signs of easing, and job vacancies have declined so far this year. While the jobs to workers gap has narrowed, labor demand still substantially exceeds the supply of available workers. Inflation remains well above our longer run goal of 2 percent. Over the 12 months ending in May, total PCE prices rose 3.8 percent, Excluding the volatile food and energy categories, core PCE prices rose 4.6 percent. In June, uh, the 12-month change in the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, came in at 3.0 percent, and the change in the core, core CPI was 4.8 percent. Inflation has moderated somewhat since the middle of last year. Nonetheless, the process of getting inflation back down to 2 percent has a long way to go. Despite elevated inflation, longer-term inflation expectations appear to remain well anchored, as reflected in a broad range of surveys of households, businesses, and forecasters, as well as measures from financial markets. The Fed's monetary policy actions are guided by our mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices for the American people. My colleagues and I are acutely aware that high inflation imposes significant hardship as it erodes purchasing power especially for those least able to meet the higher cost of essentials like food, housing, and transportation. We're highly attentive to the risks that high inflation poses to both sides of our mandate, and we are strongly committed to returning to inflation to our 2 percent objective. At today's meeting, the committee raised the target range for the federal funds rate by a quarter percentage point, bringing the target range to five and a quarter to five and a half percent. We are also continuing the process of significantly reducing our securities holdings. With today's action, we've raised our policy rate by five and a quarter percentage points since early last year. We have been seeing the effects of our policy tightening on demand in the most interest rate sensitive sectors of the economy, particularly housing and investment. It will take time, however, for the full effects of our ongoing monetary restraint to be realized, especially on inflation. In addition, the economy is facing headwinds from tighter credit conditions for households and businesses, which are likely to weigh on economic activity, hiring, and inflation. In determining the extent of additional policy firming that may be appropriate to return inflation to 2 percent over time, the committee will take into account the cumulative tightening of monetary policy, the lags with which monetary policy affects economic activity and inflation, and economic and financial developments. 
We will continue to make our decisions meeting by meeting based on the totality of the incoming data and their implications for the outlook for economic activity and inflation as well as the balance of risks. We remain committed to bringing inflation back to our 2% goal and to keeping longer term inflation expectations well anchored. Reducing inflation is likely to require a period of below trend growth and some softening of labor market conditions. Restoring price stability is essential to set the stage for achieving maximum employment and stable prices over the longer run. To conclude, we understand that our actions affect communities, families, and businesses across the country. Everything we do is in service to our public mission. We at the Fed will do everything we can to achieve our maximum employment and price stability goals.